Turn it off now. The first song slash tune I ever learned, uh, I'll give you a tune, and that would be Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, uh, the very first thing I ever learned, and then of course, uh, the next thing I learned was Brain Stew, so, by Green Day, um, you know, I went from child's lullabies to songs about methamphetamine and not knowing what any of that all meant. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want me to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? Play both of them. Play both of them? All right, well, it's been a while, and I don't really know how to do the whole thing, so I'll just do the chords. It's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And Brain Snow is just. <laughs> so, as you can imagine, uh, 15 year old me played that for about seven weeks straight <laughs> before moving on to the next thing. I had it perfect. Uh, musical? No. Um, they don't play instruments mostly. Um, my grandma sang in the choir at church, which is definitely its own instrument in, in, in its sense. So I guess that is probably um, where I get any sort of uh, musical um, talent or urge. Um, but my family always kind of liked music. Um, you know, they don't love music like I do, but they like it. So I grew up listening to Zeppelin and, and Billy Joel and Elton John. and um, So I guess that in, in its sense is its own way of getting the music into me and kind of storing it for years. And uh, <clears throat> eventually I would create my own path into finding myself playing those songs and being my own musician that I can hopefully pass down to other people members of my family. You didn't want to say you had kids? <laughs> if I have kids. If for some reason I ever have kids, I would like them to play an instrument. Okay. Um, which painting music do you most admire? Uh, there's, that's a loaded question. Um, there's, so what famous musician do I most admire? Um, Loaded question. Uh, at this moment in time, um, you, know, you go through phases in life. Right now, it's Jim James is from My Morning Jacket, uh, Monsters of Folk, uh, is the guy in music right now that seems to be getting it the most. Um, he pours everything into everything that he does, and you could tell in everything every side project that he does is just amazing it's beautiful it's spiritual it's the complete music experience it's not just a song that someone hears and they hear a lyric it's not just that it's it's a whole nother thing it's a communal thing it's what music's supposed to be and i guess all time um george harrison from the beatles i don't know if you ever heard of the beatles um yeah george harrison he that's a guy that uh, has been uh, a strong influence in my life, not just musically, but um, the way you live life, the way you interact with others, the way you go about conducting your life as a human being on this planet. I've always, I've idolized that man for so many reasons. And then if you just look at his music, he's a guy that could play six notes in two minutes and each note is the most beautiful note you ever heard. Um, he's a guy that kind of lived in the shadow of John and Paul. Uh, 
and was somehow somehow managed to write the most beautiful song of all time when sitting next to those two guys. It's that's a guy that um, has some real staying power on this earth, and it's going to be a long time before the world forgets who he is. Most beautiful song in the world. I guess something by the Beatles to me. There's so many different songs that are running through my head right now, but something was um, something. <laughs> something was something beautiful. It 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 was the ah, just the way the the chords and that little lick play off of each other. The way he sings, the melody, the, he just, he eases you into this different world where this all-knowing, this all-powerful, all-encompassing world of love, and he brings you in there like nobody else could ever do, and he makes you feel like it's okay. He makes you feel like there's beauty and real good in the world. Um, that to me speaks volumes and there's so many other songs there's Imagine I mean they're, they're mostly going to be <laughs> Beatles songs or the like but um, yeah I mean that, that, that song to me is my ideal song My relationship with my guitar, I love her. I love her so much. Uh, it's kind of hard to think about something that's um, something or some person that has been there for literally every single thing, good, bad, indifferent. This thing has been there, has been with me through it all through moves, through changes, through going to California. It's just been there and it is a part of me. As much as I'm a part of it, um, I hope that someday someone picks this thing up and does something beautiful with it because she's, she's gorgeous, she's perfect, and she's mine. <laughs> I don't believe in possessions much, but She's mine, man, and I love her. What does music mean to you? What does music mean to me? Music is everything. It's life. It's what we breathe. It's why I breathe. It's why I wake up every day. So in hopes to get to a concert or to listen to a song or to play a song or to have a conversation with some random stranger about our favorite Led Zeppelin album at 3.30 in the morning at Wawa, or to, to, to go to a, a show and, and feel like you're part of something bigger. Yeah, music, it's not, it is quantifiable in that there are like sonic waves and things floating through the air and atoms and molecules that work and vibrations. But we're all kind of vibrations, so music to me, it, it's just all part of that. It's all another way that we can experience the human experience. It's, to me, it's the most powerful way. There's no war with music. There's no hatred. You could be in the dirtiest mosh pit, and you get elbowed in the face by some guy, and then he's going to look you in the eye. He's going to hand out his hand. He's going to pick you up. He's going to say, you all right, man? Let's get back at it. Music's everything. It is everything to me. Uh, what is your fondest musical memory? My fondest musical memory. There are many different ones. As we all hopefully have. But it's gotta be Paul McCartney, Bonnaroo 2013. The the show that changed my life in such a drastic way. Everything kind of changes your life, but that show just set a whole thing, a, a whirlwind into motion. Um, being around 100,000 people all singing the same songs, singing the same words, 
sometimes not even words. You know, the na-na's, they're not words, they're just voices and sounds that we all sing and we, we're there. There was no fights, nothing. It was just us and, and the love that was the Beatles. It still is the Beatles, continuously, forever. That, there was that moment. There was so many other moments that I guess at that time in my life seemed way more important. You know, that, but that was the moment that made me realize that there will be other important moments um, in life, in music, in love, in being. That was a complete existential moment that I had that was just pure bliss. Uh, not to, the advice that I would give to a beginning musician is just do it, not to steal Nike, um, but just do it, just go out there, just pick up a guitar, um, you know, I know we all can't afford instruments, so you know what you do, you just get your hands and just beat on their table and, and just start saying things, um, start telling people how you feel, be honest. You know, don't be afraid to put yourself out there because that's the best stuff. That's the best art. You don't have to play a million notes in three seconds. You don't have to be a virtuoso. You just got to do it real from the heart. Don't listen to what anyone else wants to tell you about what's cool, what's not cool. Your heart, your feeling will always be the most important thing to you. And just go with it. Whatever it is, you need to express yourself. Pick up something, a guitar. Go to Sam Ash every day for an hour and play on their pianos. There's so many ways that you could do it. Just go do it. Billy, sit down. And make music for dogs. Billy, come here. Ugh. Hey, if you made. This could be part of it, though. <laughs> Hi. All right, I'm going to have to let you down now. Okay. Can you still hear me? Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. So tell me a little about your guitar case. Well, my guitar case keeps my guitar safe. Anything that keeps my guitar safe is uh, a okay in my books and uh, is going to get personalized, as Jim Jeffers does. Uh, as you can see here, I've had this as long as I've had the guitar. So as you can see here, obviously, Bernie, Bernie. You need this called Bernie. Um, you know, it's more than a guy, it's a movement. Um, Bonnaroo, 2013, the year of Paul. Uh, feels so good. 311 song, 311, 311. Lots of 311 you might notice. Lots of 311. I love 311. Um, my favorite band of all time. I'm here today doing this because of them. Uh, so, a couple stickers. If you want to get me a couple more to put on here, I'd be glad. Uh, Dreamweaver, that's my favorite beer. Dog and Bull. Also, Dreamweaver is one of my one of my many nicknames. <laughs> Dog.
Dog and Bull is where I drink Dreamweaver. And there's some like other like, it's like a brewing company right there. I don't really know them that well. Vans, because I've always worn Vans before now. Um, Woo is a band called Yellow Dub Marine. It was a reggae tribute band to the Beatles, which are awesome. They're from Maryland. They're really cool, and they do entire albums uh, at their shows, which is awesome to hear Revolver in like a dub reggae kind of thing. The Bouncing Souls, because I grew up on punk rock. I raised myself on punk rock. It was a beautiful thing. And those guys were one of the best at uh, best at it. Sublime. Stacy's got mad love for Sublime. I've got mad love for Sublime. Mad love for Bradley Knoll. Uh, there are no words to say what he means to to me, to Stacy, to any of us. Um, he's like my Kurt Cobain kind of thing. Uh, just such a soulful individual. Um, soulful, soulful individual. And the music just still to this day it's just it's still like it's new Star Wars um, it is The Force Awakens um, that's not my first choice of Star Wars but I love the franchise I love what they did I love uh, I love what they're saying in this especially the first three movies <clears throat> um, Last Minute Hero it's a friend of ours Ray it's his band they're pretty awesome. You should check them out. Um, he's a pretty incredible musician. Uh, up here, I've got labor for Bernie because I am a labor. I work construction. I work my hands to the bone so that I can come home and play this thing. Uh, and then we'll just flip it over once more, and i got a few more things. I've got, obviously, every good guitar case needs a piece of fruit on here, so I've got over here what looks to be a, an arch. Yeah. Um, Stratos. Um, this is Stratos. I'm not sure what they do, but the sticker's really cool when I got it at a dispensary in Denver. So I don't need any further explanation, do I? Uh, Vote Bernie. <laughs> you may have noticed. Uh, real people, real power um, that lives on through not even just elections. So stick together, love one another, be strong. Um, and that last one, I'm not a Mariners fan, but I am a fan of Utah. And I got that in Utah for 50 cents because I didn't have much money to spend when I was out there. Uh, so if that's my momentum, then okay. And they've got a beautiful stadium out there in Seattle. And this this guy... This guy is um, a stencil from my man Greg. He's from New Hampshire, live free or die. And uh, angle it a little bit forward, like right there. He uh, Greg was a, Greg's a cool guy, older hippie guy, uh, master carpenter. He um he came down to Philadelphia to, to volunteer with the Bernie campaign, and then when I drove out to California with with my two beautiful friends Shane and Aaron. Um, he ended up coming out, <laughs> driving by himself across the entire country, um, staying at the house on the beach that we were staying at, running an office. And he, uh, he had these stencils, and that's how he paid his way, was through stencils and giving out buttons. Um, that's how he paid his way to get to California and back. And um, that will forever represent to me so much more than this guy right here, but more... Greg and and the the countless other people I met um, through doing this, but yeah, Greg, if you ever get the chance to watch this, I love you, man. <laughs> this should be your face on there, not Bernie. <laughs> but yeah, that's the story of my uh, guitar case. And if you open it up, you can see. Uh, let me put this down. It's a very typical guitar case, but because my guitar is special, it's got a plastic around the back, 
it has to be around in here. So it's a one of a kind case for made for this specific guitar. And uh, keep my picks. My uh, weed recommendation, position statement. <laughs> you never know when you're gonna need that. Uh, yeah, and a, you know, a song. Maybe I'll just play this song randomly. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't looked at this in years, so we're about to find out, right? Uh... Yeah, no. Live and Cherish, it's called. I don't know what I was going with there. I think I was on to something there, actually. Okay, yeah. so that's my guitar case. Uh, I couldn't really figure out where I was going with that one, so I apologize. That was years ago. Um, yeah. Pop it up. No, like close it, lock it, and then like, prop it up. 